Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ears to the East, where we're going to be talking about, um, frankly, I think one of the most epic collaborations that probably isn't getting a huge amount of press outside of Japan, um, which is the Anna Lila Sakuta uh, collaborations, of which there were two parts. Don't ask me to say the names of the songs, for God's sake. There's a lot of kanji going on there. And the first one, at least, I'm pretty sure every time I try to pronounce it, someone goes, Howard, that's not the right um but look these two songs are really epic it was a collaboration between two huge names in the current japanese music scene but two names who perhaps on their own are not particularly famous outside of japan uh i've got neon with me who's not particularly familiar with either of these names although he knows lila sakuta's band yosobi to a small degree and he knows anna from my constant bleating about her and he's just had a little listen to the two songs for the first time so um I, as someone who's been talking about this collaboration for a while, and he is a person who's just caught first wind of it, we're going to have a little chat about it and uh, see what we think. Um, but yeah, I I, um, I did a video talking about how I thought this was such an interesting model for a collaboration. So mm. let's jump in first of all. Oh, and a big a big thank you and hello, first of all, to the Anna International fans who I know watch this channel. <laughs> Hi, International Fan Club over on Facebook. And now, with no pressure... <laughs> Leon, <guess laughs> well, now I feel very <laughs> pressured. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're always honest on this channel that's the one thing that everyone knows so let's jump straight in what did you think man i actually really really liked it i actually came into this one knowing a little bit more about anno uh than i did uh lilas uh, uh lilas it's Lila, 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 yeah Lilis. i'm gonna say we're gonna say lilas for this review but um, that's whatever you want yeah the cons of being english you've got to emphasize everything <laughs> <laughs> we don't um, know these french terms lilas lilas <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, but I was pleasantly surprised. I was pleasantly surprised actually with both songs for various different reasons. Um, the Anna one is kind of what I expected it to be, um, okay. which is a, a little bit more faster paced, a little bit more of the craziness or, or, and a really, really good song with that. Those obviously pop flair mixes in. And that's a kind of exactly what it was. Um, and the Lilas... Lilas. <laughs> yes. You say you say it different every time. I'm happy. I know, I know. One of these days I'll get it right. Like one, by I'll the end, she'll right. be like Ryan or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um listening to her song, which was like like really stripped back, like really bare bones, yeah. uh, was really pleasant to listen to, actually. Uh and kind of hearing um Anno in that situation, which she has done before, but I, I would say very rarely. Hearing mm -hmm. her in that situation as well was was really nice. And they, what I liked about both of them is they bounced back back and forth off each other really, really nicely. And it's it's a collab I would love to see more of in the future, even if it's just like maybe like one song a year or one song every two years or something like that. I I don't think they should stop the collaboration here. I'd, I'd love to see more from them. Well I came to the interesting conclusion at the end of my review because I, I did a, a rather lengthy review on this topic because I was really fascinated by the whole nature of it. Um, and I came to the conclusion that um, when you hear something like this where they did a two-part collaboration, one was Anna featuring Lilas and one was Lilas featuring Anna, I think to a, a person who doesn't know anything about this or hasn't heard the songs, it could come across like they weren't able to balance the two acts and therefore they had to do like one person hiding on the other person's song and the other person hiding on the other. I personally didn't feel it was that. For me, it felt like the opposite. It felt like they maybe knew they could do one collaboration but they were so excited by the number of possibilities that rather than making us go, well, we'd love to hear a second song, they just jumped to the obvious conclusion mm -hmm. and just did two very different songs that covered two very different potential outcomes of the collaboration. But yeah, I think all they've really done is said, rather than dropping one song and making you beg for more, they've dropped two songs and proved that they can two, do two very different things. But it's definitely like I, I'm surprising that the two songs they they're obviously not designed to appeal to the same kind of people. Mm. Um, I I, the... I think that's smart. I think I, I think that's smart. I think they've done the right thing here because again, coming from probably two slightly different backgrounds, um, the like I said, the Anna the Anno song feels distinctly Anno. Where's the uh, Lilis? Lilas? <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I ain't never corrected you. I'm just not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna. I'm let so you go. sorry. Um, is is more definitely 
a, a genre which is obviously I don't know much about her, so I can't comment on what her normal kind of like discography is. So having two completely different songs, I think complements both artists in both different ways. And um, what's really good about it as well is is that um, Lilas doesn't feel out of place in the Anno song. And Anno as well at the same time doesn't feel out of place in that one. Uh, and they, again, like I said, they both complement each other really, really well. That was the most enjoying thing of it. It never felt like one was getting more time than the other. Um, it was yeah. a very, it was a very balanced act, and it just, it just felt like two friends having like a really, really good time with two different genre songs. Well, that that's very much what I said about the second song because I felt like the the second song for me, um, it was like they just that they they throw the lines back and forth and the melody kind of it's a nice long melody but it repeats a few times and that's how the song progresses but as it goes on although the melody stays roughly the same the way it passes backwards and forwards between the two uh ladies is mm. like really nicely done it's not like just sort of set in a very specific way it's just it kind of fluidly passes between them and they kind of sing to each other um and i agree with what you said i mean like uh that was the sort of song where I mean, Leelis could have delivered that song on her own. It would have been pitch perfect. It would have been fine. But the addition of Anna to that song gave it the feeling of being a song between two friends. Because, I mean, Anna has done songs like um, Sweet Side Suicide, which was also a very stripped back kind of clean guitar song. But that was very much written in her range. It was written so that she didn't have to push herself. It was written very much so she could just kind of have like a, um, almost like a lament style song. It was very personal. Whereas um, with this, it felt more like a, it was a very heavily melody based song where it felt like Lilas was dictating the pace and Anno wasn't necessarily the one who it was written for, but the charm was hearing her reach for the high notes that were outside of her range and stuff like that. And it kind of felt like two friends sort of like dancing through a song hand in hand, you know, one who was there to deliver the perfection and the other one who was to deliver like the delicate sort of sense of humanity to it. You know, mm -hmm. there was something very delicate about Anno's performance there. But I think you could say the same with the first song in a slightly different way in that like Anno was there to deliver like the raw guttural kind of like the shouting, the madness and everything. And Lilas was there to give it like an underlying sense of refined power. You know, when you get into that bridge and it builds up, it's Lilas's voice that really like holds the um the melody as it rises up through that bridge in the first song yeah it, it kind of feels a little bit like the anno song is kind of what they felt like they should have done whereas mm. the whereas the Leela songs sounds like a song that they wanted to do that's uh, an interesting point yeah it's like yeah like you kind of please both both the audience and yourself by doing that um you know, if you go a little bit too off script to what you're usually known for, uh, it can kind of come back to bite you on the ass a little bit, or a, a, few, a few people might not be completely happy because it's not, you know, what the artist is known for. So I feel like actually kind of doing both these songs is kind of a masterstroke because you get what you want and you get something different. Maybe, like I said, maybe they get what they wanted to do out of it as well. I think the the I think you're probably right on more levels than maybe you know in that the, the first song, so Anna always, well, almost always writes her own lyrics because she tends to have a bit of a thing for taking control of that. She's also, I mean, I should point out before I sound like I'm just sort of making her sound like a generic pop star, she is an accomplished guitarist and songwriter. So she does have a play on that as well. But she's used to on her solo stuff when she's not with her band, she's used to like having uh, writers come in and do the arrangements and in the case of the Anno song it was written by TK from uh, Ling to see Desigura who 100% was the right guy for the job he's like a I really respect a lot of what he's been putting out especially of recent mm -hmm. um, and he's one for the big bombastic insane arrangements which is exactly what he served up there and he really did know how to deal with the two artists he had and yeah, I think he did a fantastic job. There's small nitpicking things I would have liked to have heard in the song, but overall, I think he did a great job. But the second song was completely penned by Lilas. As far as I'm aware, she penned that whole thing herself. The melody, the lyrics, the whole lot was all her, which is interesting because she's kind of got, whereas Anna's got this rebel image and this rebel background, Lilas kind of, she floats 
I mean, it's under the radar, but she's not like the big image or anything, but she's kind of this omnipresent, ubiquitous talent. You know, she knows how to drop these songs. I mean, like the fact that, what well, Idol by You Are Sobe, I don't know how the writing credits are handed out on that, by the way, but um, mm. Idol by You Are Sobe is the longest charting song I read in Japanese music history. And believe me, it was charting when it came out last year. It's still in the charts now. Mm. Um, so, you know, this, this woman is no stranger to success, but she doesn't quite have the edgy personality of Anna. So I think, yeah. um, Anna is like writing the, a song was a nice choice. Anna, Anna is like the rebel girl you've always had a crush on. And, and Lilas is the, uh, the girl you want to bring home to your mother. Cause you know, she'll. <laughs> <laughs> Anna's, Anna's the girl who you spend like, um, like months building up to asking out. And then when you ask her <laughs> out, she doesn't know who you are and she tells you to get lost. And then, uh, <laughs> whereas uh, Lilas is the nice girl who's disappointed that you didn't just come and have a conversation with her at the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a, there's an anime there somewhere. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the interesting thing is those two songs appeared as the dual theme tunes to part one and part two of an anime. And that anime, who are the two lead voice actresses, I didn't notice till afterwards, the two lead voice actresses in that anime are going to be Lilas and Anno. Which is why they were asked to do the um, theme tune. I think I've got. Um, I think that's a okay. great idea, actually. That's that. Whoever's thought of that is uh, they need a pay rise. That's a that's a great, great yeah. little. Uh... In, in my review of it, I said just like a '90s movie starring Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna be the actor who had to put down the. Yeah, I might as well get it out. So, um, if you don't know, in Japan, you can go up to the. Um, Probably have this in other countries as well. But you can go up to the cinema and you can get free posters for any movie that's out. So I've got the one for the um, the uh, new anime. I'll just show it. It's just that this was apparently very much an award-winning animation that came out. And yeah, the voice actresses on it are going to be Lila Sakuta and Anno, in case nice. you can't read Japanese. Um, yeah, so yeah, really cool. I don't know if there's anything in here which will be recognisable to someone who doesn't read Japanese, but yeah, basically... Uh, yeah, cool, I, you so. know, I've I've always been a fan of that. I, I probably going a, a tad bit off subject here. I'm always a fan of like actual voice actors being the singers for their parts. Uh, and That's I know, an interesting point. Yeah, yeah, Japan is actually a really really good place for that. Not all the time, but they have a lot of franchises now where the per, people voicing the, those anime characters are the people that sing and do and, and do everything. But well, this brings you on to my next poster. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, which I, which I really, really appreciate because I'm, I'm so sick and tired of like somebody voice acting that the, the uh, character and then when they sing, it's, of oh, it's so blatantly somebody else. <laughs> do, do you know what? I mean, so I, I didn't see this movie, so I can't comment, but I mean, just I'm based on what everyone else said anecdotally, but I, mm -hmm. I heard that there was a big deal when, um, like there was a movie version of Les Miserables came out. And the whole thing, or Les Miserables, as we should call it. Um, and when that came out, apparently the whole thing was, no, no, the actors, they actually sing. And everyone said, no, the, the singing in this movie is fucking awful. <laughs> so you got like Hugh Jackman and uh, what's his face? The guy from uh, Gladiator. Um, the Russell fellow. Crowe. Russell Crowe, yeah. Both both singing. And apparently it was really awful. I don't know, but that's what I heard. Um so it's like, I think you need to, so long as you've got actors who can actually pull it off, or you've got also tune that you can deliver convincingly. <laughs> <laughs> you need a good sound engineer to fix that shit. <laughs> and then like a thousand takes. Mm. But yeah, I I do respect that they're both, um... well, it's interesting. So I don't know the anime. I know the basic premise of the anime, yeah. which is about like, um, it's about two, basically the idea is that like Tokyo's got this alien ship parks above it and there's like some sort of weird encounter going on and it's just about the story of two friends during this whole thing but it it never addresses what's going around them it's just that's the backdrop and it's actually mm -hmm. about their friendship uh completely Aww. devoid of the fact there's this alien invasion going on that's kind of very background it doesn't even come up in the story very much apparently um so it was an interesting that clearly the two of them have been pegged as we need two people who are like friends. And uh, yeah, they clearly have a really good relationship, the two of them. They're very close. I mean, they seem to get on like a house on fire during all of their um, press tours and everything. So um, I think that this this collaboration had something more of a genuine 
excitement behind it it was like two artists who weren't like oh let's find a time on our tour date it was just like two artists who just became friends and spent some time together and made some music and you know hired the right people to help them put it together um, yeah. that's the feeling i get as um, as somebody coming into this who's probably not not as as well versed as you are in in, in either artist i kind of came into this one was like really like ah, you know what i really like this and the whole premise of them to kind of being backwards and forwards and what you've just said with the anime now makes me really want to go and check it out and watch the anime and, and listen to the songs a lot more so it does the job that that that's great promoting yeah. <laughs> even i who doesn't really watch anime i'm kind of like i'm eager to watch it as well um i should actually ask you know talking to the visual aspect what did you think of the videos <laughs> Uh, it, like, again, it kind of just plays into like how contrasting the songs are, doesn't it? I'm glad you told me about the anime with the alien backdrop drop and stuff like that, because obviously the the makes, anime, sense you know, makes and, yeah. a, makes way more sense now that you've just told me that. Um, because I just thought it was just like the two girls were inside of a video game. Um and I don't think that the I, I mean from what I again, I don't know the manga and the storyline, so I'm just picking up from um, but from what I know, like the there was an aesthetic similarity between the music video and the story. But as far as I'm aware, the two characters you see and everything about what's actually happening in that video is quite different from the actual anime. But aesthetically, yeah. the idea of having aliens was pretty much the only similarity, I think. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. It, but yeah, I think, yeah. It was it was, it was was a good video. But um, the if you if you asked me at the beginning whether or not I thought that the first song and the second song would be related in the same anime, I would actually be like... I would wouldn't have clocked that whatsoever. It's so drastically different in tone and stuff like that. I'm I'm interested to see how that works um, a little bit. Well, I was kind of my initial feeling was like the first one sounds like an opening theme and the second one sounds like a closing theme. Mm. Um, but then apparently the actual deal is that they again I don't know anything about it, but um, what I read is I believe that actually it was not an anime as in a TV series; it was a two part movie. Mm. The first part of the movie came out in March, and the reason why I've got that poster is because the second, like the sequel, comes out yeah. in May. So it's literally a movie and its sequel coming out with only a two month gap between them, which mm. is um. That's, uh, that's if you if you'd like me and Howard to do like a like a review a little bit or a part two to this video on the anime and uh, get us yeah. to watch it, let us know in the comments. We'd uh, we'd happily. Uh, do, I think that'd be good fun. Do a little sit down here. Yeah, yeah, especially for you, for someone who doesn't really like watch anime all too much. Um, mm. that, that would be that would be interesting to see what you think of that. But actually. I I I have been told that it's an emotional one, and I am not. I am not incapable of crying like a bitch if it's emotional. So we could we could end up with like me go. <laughs> live on stream. <laughs> so yeah, I, so I it's like I feel things. <laughs> if if a, if, a, if a movie is bad, I will be the person who you'll hate sitting in the room with. We'll just be shit on and everything like that. Wouldn't happen. It's fucking ridiculous. That never happened. But if a movie is good, I'm the person who's sitting there. Like, <laughs> So I get invested in good movies. So yeah, let's hope it's shit. Um, so... <laughs> um, but yeah, so overall though, I mean, as a collaboration concept, what were your feelings about the idea of this? Is this something you've come across before? I mean, I'm sure there's other there, examples. There's, of this, There's but... been collaborations and stuff like that with obviously various artists, but I like the fact that they've bashed out two different genre of collabs in, in such a, quick succession whether or not that's part of the marketing scheme for this anime now probably makes more sense that's the reason why they've done it more than release yeah. songs the way that they have um I, the, it, it's nice i'd like to see more artists do that i quite like the premise of having like a one artist kind of do like more their genre with this guest artist and then the other and then switching it around so they've you know is more their genre uh as well with and them guesting so i quite like that i i always go back to a really really like a uh, collab that i liked and i can never remember the name of the band i'm so sorry but they did a a, a collab with kiss um a couple okay. of years ago but they did two versions of the same song and okay. they and they did one where kiss took the lead and it's it's kiss doing the verses and the chorus 
and they're doing the backing. And then they did a Japanese version, which was the girls taking the lead with Kiss doing the backing and, and stuff like that. No way. It's a but Japanese it, group with Kiss? It was a Japanese group. I'm going to have to Google I'm Googling it, was, it right now. Yeah, Google, Google, Google who it right was, because that, that's going to annoy me. But uh, I really love both versions of um, that song. And it's it, even though it's like the same song, they're both like kind of weirdly distinctly different even though it's the same one uh and it's amazing how that how that works but it's um yeah it was it was an amazing collab i'd like to see more things like that actually it, to be honest it seems like kiss have done a couple of collaborations with japanese artists um but the first one that comes up here is uh oh god no they got a, they got a few so so Momoiro clover z is I think it's the idol group. I'll just double check. And it might be, it might be that's the uh yeah, okay, that's an idol group. And oh, okay. So I think it's an idol group who've had some attempt to push out in America and therefore, oh, I've just realized I've, I've just seen one of their videos come up. I've seen their videos before. Okay. And they did the song with Kiss. Uh I think so. So yeah, yeah it seems... I'm trying to trying to figure out who it was. Oh, yeah, I found, I found the music video as well now. Probably shouldn't play this out loud because I'm going to get copyright strikes. Um, yeah, yeah, Clover Z, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Z. Z. Z, Z, Z. I was brought up on an American base. <laughs> You're not American yet. We will keep you. But, uh, yeah, the they, they did an amazing, amazing kind of collab that I actually really, really liked. And I and I really liked both versions of that song. So like, if you've never heard that collab, go and, go and check it out. It's really good. That's a, that's a really cool idea, though. I mean, I, I, I think as well, you look at like things like with um, like rap, it tends to be a common thing that someone will guest appear on a song. And then as a result, the person whose song it is will then pay it back the favor by guest appearing on their song. Mm -hmm. And um, you hear that a lot of the time, but I think the, the sheer force that they did two songs that were so different and so clearly like constructed and made with, you know, entirely in the, on their own, you know, they were constructed entirely separately um yeah it just really blows me away i think they did a fantastic job with that um, yeah i much prefer this type of collaboration where like two artists are prominently through a song than what you just said it, it, that feels more like a features this person if that makes yeah. sense when they have like 40 seconds on a, on a four minute long song i always feel like that's a waste uh, so i like that these two are constantly through both songs always backwards and forth always getting you know their their share of the time in each song and that, that to me that feels way more authentic than just having somebody appear for like 20 seconds in a song you know it really was like, it was really the definition of a good collaboration mm. i think um oh you can do collaborations in different ways but for me this was a really excellent example but um yeah so how how would you say have your a chit uh, have your opinions about either artist changed or grown as a result of this if um, you didn't know would this be bringing you in in any way I, I would say that I've probably grown a little bit towards both of them. Um, again, I, I know a little bit more about Anno than, mm. than um, Lilas. So, so what I really actually liked about this was, was Anno actually coming in with for the, the Lilas song and hearing her just like strip back little bit less of, of the Anno persona in, in this mm. and hearing her like more clean solos just with like the back end of a guitar uh, with cleans uh, was really, really kind of nice to hear that. And on top of that, um, hearing her alongside Lilas, which Lilas is, has a more lower voice and Anno mm. still has that, that cutesy idol high tone um, Even when she's screaming at you, she's still got this like sort of like cute <laughs> maniac scream, but it's very yeah. cute at the same time. Um, but but he, he, even hearing that contrasted to Lila's uh, was was really nice. I and I enjoyed that. So um, got to see a little bit of a different side to Anna uh, to what I usually associate her with. Um, so that was that was really really nice. I, and I, I liked both songs, and I'd, uh, it makes me want to check out more, both artists a lot more. It is true that the, um, like I said, the Anno song, the only time I heard her like on a strip back song before was like something a little bit more depressing. <laughs> so this is the first time I've seen her on, like that I can think of where I've seen her, heard her on a strip back song that was actually quite, 
quite positive in a lot of ways. But yeah, the Lilas one, I, I, again, I'm more familiar with her work in your Sobi. So I went and checked out some of her solo stuff off the back of this. So I think ultimately it's kind of productive for their solo careers as well. You know, you can imagine getting a lot more out of this by people just... Um, yeah, I actually just did your Sobi the, uh, the other day as well. Uh, which one did you do? We're trying to jump back into it. They just released a new song, and uh, I can't remember the track. Again, I'm awful. I'm awful with track names and names of songs. <laughs> and, um, me too. Me too. But I just did a video. I haven't posted it yet. Uh, so the fact that she's from Yosobi again, because I'm not complete. I know of Yosobi. I've done a few reactions to them, but I've never gone like too in depth. Like I know the people. Mm. But I yeah. I did a reaction the other night, and um, on stream we watched a documentary about Yosobi, which kind of like oh, okay, which told me a little bit more about their background and the. So you're probably familiar with her without knowing. Without knowing, so when yeah. I when I when I saw this today, I, I I actually didn't clock on that that was her um so having mm. actually watched this documentary a little bit about like her background and, and uh, the yosobi how that kind of formed and stuff like that is uh makes me appreciate her a lot more any thoughts on like like lilas herself i mean i know like in uh so i, I think in yosobi she's referred to as ikuda i think mm. and ikuta is her surname in this project and who knows if that's her that's... real name yeah, that's, that's probably why it didn't click as well, because I was like, yeah. Lilus, that, that that was new to me. Um, can, can we just say, though, that I know it's I know that almost certainly she doesn't actually want it to be pronounced Lilus. I think she wants Lila. But can we just say that Lila Sekuta is probably the coolest name in history? <laughs> just as, as a name. Different, isn't it? Lila Sekuta just sounds freaking epic. <laughs> like in any accent, Lila Sekuta just sounds cool she'd be like a star in every movie i'm not even mean as the actor i just mean as the character should be called lila sakuta in every movie. yeah so <laughs> it, it does sound pretty cool but uh, it, it's nice actually seeing this on the on the backdrop of that kind of like a little bit off topic because i'm trying to i'm trying to get into different acts that i usually don't wouldn't usually get into so i'm really trying to push my my own personal like boundary of um different artists yeah, and good for you, good for you. Well, I'm I'm glad that um the community's been getting you into um your sobi, and I've been pushing you into Anno music, and uh, mm. I am glad as well that from doing a little bit of uh, looking around online, I have found there's a lot of there's a lot of Anno fans out there, but they tend not to be sort of centralized anywhere. So again, big thank yeah. you to everyone on the Facebook group, and uh, just generally for people who've been uh, sort of following. Uh, my videos in relation to this, I keep on getting people coming nice. back to me with comments about it. But I, I, I do, I, I do have a couple of uh, Anna reactions. If you want to see my uh, first time reactions to the songs we're talking about today sure. as well, make sure to go check out my channel as well. I would appreciate the love and support. <laughs> That's why you took more than ten minutes to listen to the two songs that I sent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I make sure. I make sure. I'll I be back in ten minutes, and then yeah. it was like half an hour later. I should have guessed. Yeah. Reaction yeah, boys, I, reacting. Reacting boys, reacting. Hi. So I'm happy. I can't wait to watch them as well. But anyway, any um any last thoughts on this then before we round this one up? Um, would like to see more more collaborations for, like this in the future. Uh, opens a possibility, I think, for more. I feel like the ad, whoever's the producer or the anime person behind the scenes here that's got both of these artists in to do the music, the advertising, and the voice acting. Whoever that is deserves a raise. Commercial um, genius. Commercial genius. Yeah, like I feel like they, they've done a fantastic job there. And all in all, in all, um, I, I got nothing but positive things to say about this. I, I really enjoyed it from start to finish. Uh, I'm really glad that both songs again was so contrasting in genres that um, yeah, it was that was a nice change of pace. And and like I said, it didn't feel like a feature in it. Felt like a full on collab and. You could definitely tell that they're friends because they they just bounce back and forwards off each other. All right, yeah, I, I'm I'm I can't really agree any more from that. I just think it's like a, it's it's just such a nice quintessential example of a a, a um, collaboration that felt like it was wanted and happened mm. like with a degree of in, in, enthusiasm and yes, planning, but the planning didn't feel like the forcible planning of let's make this happen. It felt more like mm. two people who were excited to think of a way of working together. Um, I do hope we hear more uh, from both of them, both solo and together. would be great if we them together. Um, I'd love to add like Utaha from Wednesday Campanella into the mix and see what happens there <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, just great stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, 
love to know what you guys think get in the comments tell us a little bit more um we're gonna uh, talk about a few other songs as well in the coming few videos so do keep your ears with us and remember to also keep your ears to the east we're never gonna get this right no no, no. <laughs>